Coming here, we lived in Northeast Ohio for 10 years. You know, we've talked a lot about the snow there. Coming off the lake, it's just, it's just different. It's just a different kind of snow. And, and they don't cancel anything for anything up there. You know, they're so prepared for it. We would joke how the drifts would be like as tall as the kids and they would just plow a path through the middle of it and send the kids on to school. It was like, it's no problem. Just send them on, they're fine. They never cancel school for the snow. But there was something else up there that I don't think we've talked about before. And it was the wind coming off the lake. It was just crazy. That there were days that the wind coming off the lake was so strong and it wouldn't be it wouldn't even be during a storm there wouldn't be rain or snow or anything like that it would just be wind it would be so strong that they would actually have to cancel school because of wind because it would be physically impossible for the kids to walk to the bus stop because like they, it would blow the kids over if they try to walk to the bus stop because the wind was so bad. So they would have to cancel school because of the wind. And we lived just a block from the lake, just a block from the beach. So when they'd cancel school because of the wind, what would the Warren Five do? We would load up the car and we would drive to where the wind was the worst. That doesn't surprise you, right? So we would drive right out onto the beach and we would see if we could stand up against the wind. Now, Emma was only about three at the time, so I would stay in the car with her because, seriously, I was afraid that if she got out of the car, she was tiny, and I was afraid that it would just blow her away. So I would stay in the car with her, but Gabe and Brooklyn were like five and seven. You remember this? And they would get out of the car with Andy, and he would stand there, and they would hang on to his arms, and they would get out. And first of all, when you got out, you know that phrase, take your breath away? It literally would like, <gasps> like you couldn't breathe when you got out. And they would hang on to his arms, and they'd try and stand there, you know, in the wind. And like, you couldn't, it was crazy. But I'd stay in the car with Emma, and one of the things that I remember, and it, it frustrated me so much. It, like, it made me mad because the stupid seagulls, like seagulls are so dumb. Weren't they the ones in the Nemo movies that were like mine, mine, mine? Like seriously, like these seagulls, they would try and fly in this wind and they would be flapping and straining and try, like as hard as they could and they literally would not be moving at all they would just be like as hard and and I would sit in the car and I would watch them and the whole time they were there that we were there just flapping and flapping and flapping and not even moving at all trying to fly straight into this wind and it would make me so I'm like you guys you you're so stupid why are you doing this sitting there watching these birds and thinking okay listen seriously you've got two choices either land and sit and wait for the wind to pass or two turn around and fly in the direction of the wind and if you do that oh my goodness you could fly so far and so fast and so easily and it would be so easy if you do that right so often in our lives, we ask God, come in, move, do something in me. And then we fight against him with everything inside of us. And we do nothing. We go nowhere. We don't move. And we ask, why is nothing happening? And God's like, you're fighting against me. So if we ask God to come in like a rushing wind, move in my life. We got to be ready to move with them, right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on now.
have your way in me. Lord, have your way in me. I can't pray, Spirit, move. I can't pray, God, breathe. I can't pray, Lord, do something unless I pray, Lord, have your way in me. That when you speak, I'll listen, I'll walk, I will do what you tell me to do. I'll be who you tell me to be. I'll see what you show me. So God, give me the strength, give me the courage, open my eyes, open my ears, Lord. That when I ask you to move, I, when I ask you to move in my life, that I'm ready to move in the direction you show me to move, Lord. That God, just as your son prayed, Lord, just as you prayed, not my will, but yours be done, that I'm ready to pray that same prayer. God, we love you, we praise you, and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen? Would you give him praise this morning? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, gang, good morning. We probably could go home after that, couldn't we? Bam. That's some, that's some praise and some worship and some prayer preaching. Amen. I will talk to Beth next week. Don't worry. I will talk to her about being a little more passionate during her prayer. I'll make sure. We'll sit down. We'll go over what's expected when she prays, and I'll make sure that she brings it better next week. Okay? My goodness, I wish you would try harder. All right. And Tim, Tim, if you need me to help you with vocals next week, Tim, nice job. Awesome. So, great worship experience this morning. Great worship experience this morning. Uh, we've been in this teaching series, Become Great, and if you've missed a week or two or you've missed the whole month of June, we're glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, the, the whole tagline, Become Great, so in, within that word become, as we've said for a couple of weeks, there's more than one word in it, and we've, we've unpacked it by saying if you simply be me, come to Jesus, great things will happen. Be me. Come to Jesus and great things will happen. This whole teaching series, really the origins of it are when Beth and I first came to victory. And my, my goal was to simply lead as a, as a pastor by just being me. And, and, I, and I had oftentimes tried to uh, replicate somebody else's style or emulate someone else's personality and it just wasn't working. And so when we came, I said, I just want to be me. Uh, sometimes I'm a little too sarcastic, and I, I, I'll, I'll balance it. Sometimes Beth will tell me that you, you can't say that in a sermon. That's why we have two services. The first one I try it out, the second one we work on it. We're, we're, we're going to three services. You guys hear that news last weekend? We're going to three. Here's a really great testimony. Um, we have a family that works every weekend. Uh, they have not been to church in two years. Um, they love our style. They love our church. Um, they didn't want to try to find another church. And so they, they just watched my messages on Mondays. So that's their church service. And they said, we've missed the worship. We missed everything. And they said, they've, they said this is an answer to prayer. We will be in church every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. So they're so excited about that. And so um, it's exciting to see what God's doing in our church. Uh, growing in the summertime. What church does that? Our church. Amen. So we started just saying, I want to be me. And when, when I come to Jesus and are simply, you know, me, great things happen. So we looked at... Uh, as an individual, how do I become great? A couple weeks ago, look at, at the investigating the gifts that God has. Uh, and then last week, it, look at how, I, how do I get involved at, at victory? Uh, take that first step. And I know sometimes, don't let the start stop you. I know sometimes stepping out of your comfort zone into the unknown can be pretty scary. Uh, but we said that when you take a step into the unknown out of your comfort zone, don't worry, God's there. Uh, God, God will give you confidence. Uh, we backed it with Scripture. Philippians 4.19 says, We can be confident that He who began a good work in you will carry it to its completion. And so when you take that step into the unknown, out of your comfort zone, the presence of God is with you, guiding you, giving you confidence. And this is such a great way. Now, if you've missed one of those teachings, you can go to our Facebook page, 
website, MySpace. Um, you can go everywhere, and then we'll, we'll, we'll fill you in on what you missed. So what's MySpace, Mom? Uh, talk, we'll talk about it later. So um, I wonder if mine's still active. Please check that. forgot my password. So all right, we'll move on. Today we're going to look at the importance of leaving an investment for our future. Now, before you start freaking out, this is not a money message. You're like, you've been timing them. Okay, he preached on money about nine weeks ago. He shouldn't be taught money for a few more weeks. We were good to go. Now, this is more uh, about leaving a, a, a legacy. This is more about what we do in our life individually. And so I want to talk about the importance of, of, of being great in leaving an investment and how important that is. And again, the next two weeks, we're leading up to Community Weekend. Um, it is one of our biggest events of the year, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the car show, all the details that, that uh, you know, surround that. And so uh, we're going to talk about inviting our friends the next couple of weeks. And then we're launching this brand new teaching on Community Weekend called When Pigs Fly. And um, some of you, you just did something. You maybe raised your hands. You may have said, I'll raise my hands in church when pigs fly. You may have put money in a bucket. I'll put money in a bucket when pigs fly. Guess what? Pigs are flying. So we're going to talk about that on Community Weekend. Talk about miracles and healings and things like that. So when pigs fly. So let's jump into today. To give you a backdrop, kind of a main idea for this whole morning. Uh, this is one that I've worked on. And this is one that uh, I've lived and, and Hopefully, I'm more 80-20 on the good end than the challenging end. But we're going to look this morning at, at to become great and leave an investment for those around us. We have to make sure that we say the right yes. So the right yes leads to success. The wrong yes leads to a mess. Now, many of us, we can look back on our lives and we can see all the wrong yeses that we've made and the messes that we've left. Have you been there? Relationships you should have never gotten into. Purchases you should have never made. Text messages you should have never sent. Have you done that? You're so mad. And your thumbs get tired, you rest a minute. And you hit send. And then as soon as you send it, you go, oh. Or as soon as you tweet it, or you hit post, you've been there, you're like, oh. Delete, delete, and then you start getting screenshots, like saying, hey, did you really do this? Isn't that the powerful feature? They can screenshot stuff that you post. Crazy. And so we want to look today at how important it is to say the right yes that leads to success. So when I mean success, it's biblical success. What God deems successful versus saying the wrong yes and it leading to a mess. And, and, and you've all been there. You know, the spring break you can't come back from. You know, so we're looking at the significance of that. Now, in order to go there, uh, we're going we're gonna to trust what Jesus has to say. And that way, if you're upset with something, you know, you can just be, be upset with God's Word and, and then He'll work with you and the Holy Spirit will make you see that you're at fault, not Him. So, we're in Luke chapter 12 today. Luke is the third gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke. So if you have your Bibles, you can open them there. Uh, if not, all the Scriptures are on the screen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Jesus tells a parable so verse number 16 and then he told them a parable and just so you know a parable is a made-up story and so jesus would often tell parables to illustrate a point now these these parables again they're made up but sometimes like right in the middle of the parable you forget that it's made up like you you get so like i can in in in, in, in ensconced in the story you're like oh my goodness this is this is pretty cool but it's a made-up story and so you have to remember that so jesus tells this parable the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. So maybe you are living on a farm or you grew up on a farm, you have family who's a farmer, and, and so it's a bumper crop year. It's a great year. And so that's what's happening. So everybody in the audience was, was you know, like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest, and he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. Look on the screen. I'll pray about it. And that's not what it says on the screen, is it? No. Wouldn't, wouldn't a lot of your headaches have been relieved if you would have sought the Holy Spirit first? You know, a, a lot of the things that we get ourselves in trouble, a lot of the yeses that we've said, you know, or a lot of the decisions that we've said yes to um, would have been prevented or paused if you simply would have just said, you know, before I, I do this, before I engage in this, let me, let me seek what God has to say. We, we say this often, and I say it to couples a lot, um, the, the decisions that you 
make today determine the stories that you tell tomorrow. And so uh, it was so cool watching you know, my kids' reactions during first and second service as Beth was telling the stories of standing on Lake Erie on a windy day. Because they all went back there. And I love that it was a free event. It was a risky day, but we, the sea was angry that day, my friends. And we stood, and, and that they remember that. The decisions that you make today determine the stories you tell tomorrow. So make good decisions and have good stories to tell. So he says, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And he says, here's what I'll do. I'll be generous. Wouldn't that be awesome? It's not what he says either. Most of us in the room, you've at least gotten a raise or two in, in your life, hopefully. And when we get a raise, most of the time our standard of living goes up. But what if instead of our standard of living always going up, what if our standard of giving went up? That instead of being you know, ungrateful or, or not content with your three-bedroom, 1,800-square-foot, one-car garage home, when you got that raise and your standard of living went up, because you know, before you got the raise, that home was nice and you loved it, but you know, eight hours later, you're like, man, this home, it's a shack. I got a raise. I can't be living in this neighborhood. And all of a sudden, now you have to have the four-bedroom, 2,500-square-foot, two-car garage with a deck and a half acre. And again, I'm not saying that that's not something that can happen in your life, but oftentimes our standard of living goes up, but our standard of giving doesn't. And God wants to bless us today. So he says, I have no place to store my crops, so this is what I'll do. I will tear my barns, tear down my barns, and build bigger ones. And there I'll store my surplus. Do you know what he had a case of? Of BBS, bigger barn syndrome. Some of you are like, I don't know what BBS stands for, but I know what, no. Oh, Beth's about to write some stuff down. Like, you know, here's the apology email. You know, he shouldn't, have, he shouldn't have said that. Okay, BBS, bigger barn syndrome. Do you, have a, do you ever suffer with that? Do you ever suffer with, you, you have to have something shinier and newer? And so that's what he suffered with. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. We, we all want to be happy. There was a survey taken um, among teenagers. And I don't want to you know, degrade a whole demographic because all three of my kids are in this demographic. So last year, 2017, a Gallup poll was taken among those 13 to 19 and they were asked, what, what is your number one goal as far as professionally? Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Is, is what they were asked. I remember asking, you know, like, I want to be a football player. I want to be, you know, a rock star. Like Tim and I on the road. Be awesome. Tim, we just, because you know, if I stand next to you, I sound, I sound good, you know. So, I remember thinking, here's different things I want to be. I wanted to be a banker when I was young. Like my whole goal, I, I, my, seriously, my goal, I wanted to eat lunch in a bank vault. That was my goal. I wanted to, I wanted to celebrate my wealth in the bank vault. And uh, so God called me to ministry. And I said, how much did that make? Not as much as that guy. So um, we all have things we wanted to be growing up. So, so a Gallup poll was asked about those 13 to 19. What's the number one thing that you want to be when you grow up? And almost 60% of those interviewed said they wanted to be a YouTube sensation. A YouTube sensation. Now again, I'm all for being able to make money on YouTube, and I'm all for that, you know, being, you know, something that our economy and something that our society has embraced, but that's number one on your list. And again, I asked my kids, and they're like, that'd be really, really cool. That'd be awesome. But it's not number one on their list. And again, what happens is most of us are, are self-absorbed. <laughs> Preach it, Andy. Let me get that hanky out. I'll wave it around. Most of us are self-absorbed, and so we have to learn what that looks like. We have a selfish passion about me. And as you mature and become who God wants you to be, God says, I don't want you to have a selfish passion about you. I want you to have a selfless purpose toward others. And that's a very difficult thing, and sometimes we'll, we'll slip, and sometimes you know, we, we, we tend to focus or, or, or pay more attention to our own wants and our own needs. But as we mature and look more who like Christ wants us to look like, it becomes more of a selfless purpose toward other people. Jesus is telling the story, he says, take life easy, eat, drink, be merry. 
But God said to him, you fool. Now, if you weren't paying attention to the story, all of a sudden you look up because you're like, now again, this is Jesus saying this. Jesus goes Mr. T on all these people listening. He's like, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. This is how it will be with everyone who stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. Now let, let, me, let me clarify that. Money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. And Jesus does not say it's a sin to accumulate things for yourself. He doesn't say it's wrong to, to, to build up a savings account or a retirement account or to, to, to add possessions to your life. What he's saying is that if you store up things for yourself but you're not rich toward God, that's when you act foolish. And so what happens is when your standard of living goes up but your standard of giving does not, you're acting very foolish. And so I want to look today at how do we as a church say the right yeses that lead to biblical successes so we can avoid those messes that God has for us. So as we navigate into this, let me, let me give you a few things that I think would help us to become great. Because oftentimes, here's how we live. We live ungrateful. We, we oftentimes have this mindset that I don't appreciate what I have. We, we live toward a, you know, uh, a non-appreciative of, of the things that are around us. First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, Rejoice always. You know, when you, when you rejoice, rejoicing is a reaction to God's blessing over your life. When you rejoice, it's an overflow. It's a reaction of what God has blessed you with. But most of the time, we don't rejoice. We live a life of regret based on the decisions that we've made. And so we regret, and our regretfulness is rooted in ungratefulness. That's a great spot for an amen. You can just think about that for a little bit later, then we'll jump in. You see, oftentimes we, we, we feel like as, as God does things in our lives, are we truly appreciative of them? Or are we constantly comparing my life to somebody else's life? As, as a guy or as guys, we, we tend to focus on just a few things. We want our shoe game to be nice. We want our rides to look nice. And we want to make sure that we have nice hair. So let me, let me, let me go. So last week on Father's Day, I was, I was walking to my car. And a single mom with her two teenage daughters were walking to their car at the same time. And I, here, here, here's my whip. Look at this. This is my, my 05 Acura TSX, 120,000 miles. Got some character marks on it. It's beautiful. Different angle. First angle. First angle. Man, it's, a, it's like a nine-second delay back there. Right? There we go. So I'm, I'm walking to my car, and um, these two teenagers go, Pastor Andy, your car is really cool. And it wasn't like a sarcastic really cool. It was like, a, I think your car is really cool. And I, it, I feel like the Holy Spirit just checked me. Because moments earlier, I was kind of complaining and saying, man, I wish I had a different ride, had a different car. Wish it was newer or shinier. I wish the windows rolled down in my car. They don't. The motors are broke. I wish it didn't have that character mark in the very front. There's a big bit of a dent in the front. I wish the air conditioning worked all the time. It works great in November. It's really great. <laughs> it's paid for, gets me from A to B, and I want to celebrate, not compare. So my, my shoe game's usually pretty good, right, Beth? My shoe game's usually pretty good. Now my hair, that's a different story. Emma and I, Emma had a friend spend the night this past week, and so we were sitting in the living room, and um, Emma's friend said, Mr. Warren, has anybody ever told you, you kind of look like The Rock? I said, what? I said, well, let's look at that. Yeah, that's me. Wait, wait, let me, that's me on the left. Just to make sure you are aware. You see, if you're, if you're going to rock this look, that's not a bad guy to be compared to. Can I get an Amen. Um, what? <laughs> oh, it's a rough crowd this morning. <laughs> Let's go back to the Bible. I think it's easy sometimes for, a live, to, for us to live a life of comparison, a life of ungratefulness. And when we're trying to become great in the way that God wants us to become great, 
when you're ungrateful and when you're living comparatively, you ignore verses like this. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Don't, don't listen if you don't want to become great, because I think this is how most of us live. We do not dare classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure, measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. I mean, that'd be a great verse for you to live by, but again, most of us, we just live you know, comparing and most of us live not celebrating what other people have. Most of us live ungrateful. We're not rejoicing. We're living with regret because we've made a bunch of messes and we, we are saying yes to the wrong things. But what if we said yes to the right things? And what if in saying those yeses to the right things, it would lead to God blessing beyond our wildest imagination? Jesus said in Luke twelve fifteen, watch out. Be on guard against all kinds of greed. Greed's not just about money. There are other things to be greedy about. Life does not consist in the abundance of its possessions. So as we kind of land here from here, we're going to talk to Brian and Carolyn. We're going to look at the yeses that they made. But before we do that, it's important for us as a church to understand that Gratitude enables you to realize that what you have is enough. Now, there may be needs that are presented, but when you're able to say, God, I want to make sure I say the right yeses to things, that will lead to you blessing, and that will lead to you providing, and that will lead to me being able to trust you with the future. Because it's very difficult to leave an investment, to leave a legacy. When you're constantly ungrateful and comparing. So let's learn to be grateful and to celebrate what God has done in our life. And as we do that, there'll be such an investment in you leaving to other people. Amen. Now I want to uh, end this morning by taking a few minutes. And we're going we're gonna to sit down and have just a short chat with Brian and Carolyn. Brian, would you bring up these stools? Tim, would you give them a hand just real quick? Bring up these three stools. And would you welcome Brian and Carolyn down to the platform with me this morning? Let's put these over here. Let's put them up just a little bit. We weren't, we weren't quite in the light last time. Thank you, Tim. How are you doing, sir? Good. Good to see you. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. Um, would you go ahead and would you greet us in Swedish? Brian, you want to take this one? <laughs> Greetings in Swedish. <laughs> I really mean it. I really do. All right, would you do it as well? I will. God morgon, Victory Church. Vi är så glada att få vara här med er denna morgon och med era fantastiska pastorer Andy och Beth Warren. I understand that last part. <laughs> We're really glad that you're here all the way from Sweden. And so um, you, would you just introduce, uh, there, there's a great picture of you guys. And would you introduce uh, your children? As you can see on the next screen, there's some picture there. So we have three amazing daughters. Uh, two of them are here in service. We have Olivia here at 15, Kaisa who is 13, and then Madeline is hanging out in the kids ministry, and Very she's cool. almost 11. Almost so. 11. Great. It's good to know. Yes. Okay. And so you guys are home for a little bit. And I say home. Now you grew up in Sweden, right? Yes, so that is my home country. Stockholm. Stockholm. Yes. Okay. So you grew up there, Brian. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Rockford, Illinois. That's where we met. Very cool. So you guys met. Uh, you were home, or you were you came to America to study. Is go to college, right? Mm-hmm. And so you meet this American boy, yes. and the rest is history. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so a few years ago, you guys decided to say yes and to go uh, back home for you yeah. and for you. This this is like an eternal mission trip. Yeah. We had when I proposed before she said yes, yeah, she actually said, "Could you ever see yourself living in Sweden?" Okay. So a tip to the guys: if you're handing the hardware and she starts negotiating, <laughs> you just want to pray. You just, you just want to pray. You know, she's got a, she's got a long game. You know, she's, oh, most, she, of us, most of our mindsets are very short. You know, she's she pretty had girl. She had a long game working really well. Okay. I'm going to marry her. She's a yeah. pretty girl. And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. We're going to get, yeah. And we're going to end up there. Yeah. So it's great. So you end up there. You say yes. You're back to Sweden. And so I want to talk just a couple minutes about, you know, the, the, the culture of Sweden and, yeah. um, you know, what you're saying yes to there. And, and uh, so what have you guys been doing the last several years? 
Well, so it's been almost three years three since years, we yeah. left, and uh, you talked about, you know, people like to upsize, you mm -hmm. know, get the bigger house, get the nicer car. Well, we downsized, so we went from our very beautiful home in Michigan to a, a, a lovely little apartment, uh, shared laundry space, which is great oh. uh, when you have a family of five and one car, and we do a lot of public transportation. Okay. So the last three years, what we've been doing is a lot of just, honestly, building relationships. So I left as a 19-year-old, so to head back 20 years later it's a lot different. Mm -hmm. And so we have been uh, networking, getting to know pastors. We uh, have been doing community dinners. So we've been opening up our home and inviting people to come in with, from all different backgrounds, not just Swedish, but different nationalities. And um, it's, it's been a learning process to come back to. It's a very different Sweden that I grew up in to what right. it is today. Okay. And so what, what is the kind of the moral makeup, the, like, like the spiritual DNA of Sweden? Yeah, so some quick numbers. Sweden is a country, fifth largest land mass, but the population could fit in Ohio. So it's the fifth largest country land in the world? So it's, in, it's, Europe, it's a, in Europe. In Europe, okay. <clears throat> yeah. And then, but it's only about 10 million people. So a lot of gorgeous country. Um, Stockholm, city of 2.2 million, fastest growing European capital, but in the country of Sweden, only 2% recognize Jesus Christ. And then you get into the city of Stockholm, and that number drops to 0.6%. So if you flip that number, 99.4% of the students that my daughters go to school with do not know Jesus. Wow. Their teachers don't. The administration doesn't. Um, people that we pass on the subway or in the neighborhood, 99.4% of the people don't even know how to start the conversation, a conversation that we are so comfortable with in this room. Yeah. And it's almost easy for us to do that. We, we take that for granted. Now, and again, just a clarifier, so, so Sweden is not what you said first service, just so we know geographically you know, where, where, where Sweden is. There's a, a confusion sometimes uh, uh, among Americans. Sweden is not Switzerland, okay? <laughs> Switzerland is here, then Germany, then over the Baltic Sea, and then you see Sweden. So we are at the tippy top right. of, of Europe. Right, so, so Germany, who beat you guys yesterday in soccer, and then, and then Sweden, that's what that is right there. Is that how we, how we go? And I know you guys are soccer fans, and so how are you doing? Did you need some prayer time this morning? Is everything okay? Do you need some prayer time now? <laughs> well, here's the deal. Sweden made it to the World Cup. Ooh. Nice, nice. Came from the 13-year-old, just right. so you know. Right, that's awesome. And soccer is... I don't, I mean, is it football? What, what, no, football. Is it football? football. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump in later on that one, on that little mini debate. I think football might be coming to uh, Europe. So we'll, real football. Real we'll football. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. So, okay, so we have, we have Sweden, Germ Baltic Sea, Germany, and then yeah. Switzerland below. And so this, this makeup, as far as this, the, the, you know, the, the moral makeup, um, there's not a lot of followers of Jesus over there. No, not at all. And so, and you feel it. You feel it in when you come into the country. You feel it with the laws and and the attitude and the atmosphere. And uh, it's not just dark because we're so far north in the winter time. But you just feel it. You see an emptiness in people's mm -hmm. eyes when you walk around in the city. Um, there's a phrase uh, called to walk into the wall in Sweden, meaning like you're too stressed out. Life is too much. So you walk into the wall, and then you can be on sick leave for several years. From that wow. and so in that though but if there's no hope you know if there's no victories if there is no grace i mean where do you get your strength from well mm -hmm. you, you the government takes care of you and you get a good portion of your salary and you just stay home wow and so you've said yes to going and that's that's seen some success in building relationships What's the next yes that you're saying yes to? And this is a huge yes for us. Uh, we have decided that we are going to be planting an international church. Very cool. It's going to be Stockholm Community Church. Uh, again, community because we want to bring people in to community. And uh, we will be launching February 3rd. So, um, 2 3 19. Yes. That's very, very cool. Yeah, go ahead. It's exciting. Yeah. I love it. So launching a brand new church, um, give us some details of, of you know, what's going to be happening, what, what are some needs that you have, um, you know, what's the makeup of the church going to be? Go ahead. 
So we're, we're really starting from scratch right now. There's six of us uh, on the leadership team. And so this fall, we're going to be building our launch team, which is uh, the goal is to have between 35 to 50 people part of our launch team before we launch. And, and that's a, a big number when you think of how few Christians there are. So uh, there's going to be a lot of evangelism <laughs> and a lot of just yes. continue to build on those relationships. But we, like, we don't have a keyboard. We don't have guitars. We don't have awesome drums. We don't have sound or light. And, and those are all the things that we're going to need. And it's going to have to be portable. And, and Sweden's a, a lot different than America as far as how, how much things cost. Absolutely. So just to start out with, the sales tax on everything is 25%. Uh, oh, oh, you want to get it worse? Okay. Your income tax, no matter the starting bracket, is 30%. And the more money you make, it goes up to 50%. Uh, we're not in the 50% bracket. We're in the 30% bracket. So <laughs> just to clarify. Just to clarify. Yes. But we, like, we don't have like your Costco's, and we don't have these great online stores where we can buy things. And so even to find a space to rent, um, we are praying for, and please pray with us for a space that would seat 300 adults and 100 children. And, and again, that would be considered a mega church mm -hmm. in Sweden. But we are believing that God uh, is just going to do some miraculous things. We, we are praying for some acts uh, things to happen, the things that happen in the book of Acts to happen in, in Stockholm. And so, so those are some of the practical things. We want a kids check-in system so that we safely can check kids in and make sure we give them back to the right parents. Definitely. You know? And I love, the, I love your idea. Hey, we're, we're praying for facility, not a, not a living room, not a garage. Yeah. We want to we go big and we Absolutely. want you know, a space for 300 adults, for 100 kids. That's exciting. Yes. And I believe that God's going to reward you with your measure of faith. And that's, that's neat to see. So what are, you know, on top of the, the, the practical things, yeah. you know, and, and building a leadership team, what are some other ways that our church can, can pray with you? So this may be an interesting way to pray, but I want you to pray this. We need people like you in our church. So when you pray, and, and, and it would be, you know, Andy say, send an Andy to Brian and Carolyn. But we really do need Andys, and we need Beths, and we need all of you, because there is, you know, sometimes when a church starts, there might be some people who have been part of other churches who come, but really there's no such thing that will happen like that in Sweden. And so we need people like you. So when you pray for us, pray, may they send a John, may they send a Tim, may they send a Veronica, because um, that's what we mm -hmm. need. Uh, and really, I'm going to just say, pray for our kids. Uh, they are in an environment that does, that does not promote biblical values at all. And they already stick out because they're Americans and they're different. And now that their parents are planting a church and going to be official pastors, they're going to stick out even more. And um, Swedes don't like different. They have this like, we're the same, don't stick out too much. And, and so my, my kids, I mean, they really are the heroes in all of this. You know, they are the ones who, you know, we've made sacrifices to, to go to Sweden, but man, um, they have probably made more sacrifices than what Brian and I have to be part of this calling that God has for us as a family. And so really be praying for them. Absolutely. And so again, our our partnership as a church is we've, we've supported you guys as soon as you, you left, and so we want to increase our support. And that's a huge thank you to you as a church body that we're able to come alongside. And we're doing great things here locally, uh, which is neat, you know, from third service to events and things like that. But also, we want you to know that globally, we want you to have an investment. And so we wanted you to see where your investment's going to be going. And so we also want to come alongside and strategically partner with them, not just in prayer, but also in finances, so that we can invest in them. And they may have questions or say, well, how did, how did this work here? How did this work there? Because there are biblical principles that can work from Sweden to Ohio. And so, you know, styles may be different, but principles will work regardless. And one of the things that you had said, just because... Um, Sweden is, is a mover and a shaker in, in the global economy. And Brian, you said something very interesting, first service, you know, because I think that when we think Sweden, we think Ikea. And some more, there's more things that we think when we think Sweden. Um, you may not be aware, uh, Candy Crush. A lot of you guys played that during service today. Uh, your kids <laughs> uh, playing Minecraft came out of Sweden. Skype, uh, pacemaker, dialysis machine. Sweden is an incredible city of innovation, or that's a country. Ikea. Ikea. So, um, so what Andy's referencing is year after year, the Bible has been the most printed book on a year-by-year -year measurement. Well, three years ago, one book has surpassed the Bible in being printed globally, and that is the Ikea catalog. First time in history a book has been printed more than the Bible. And again, this is this little country of 10 million sitting on the top of Europe that could fit in Ohio. Wow. 
but it is, it, is a, it is a country of innovation and influence, and they desperately need the influence of Jesus Christ. Amen. So would you just thank Brian and Karen for coming today? So, again, as a church, we're going to come alongside strategically partnering with prayer as well as finances. Now, Carolyn, tonight, you're going to be here for our coffee night, uh, for our conversation. So it's coffee, conversation, and Carolyn. And uh, now you don't drink coffee, so yep. we'll have some vanilla chai tea. Black tea. Black, Black tea. tea. Okay, I'm a big fan of the vanilla chai. It's a really, it's a really, really nice blend. You really guys can is. have some chai okay. together. Um, and Brian, um, we might want to be here tonight um, to help support Brett. You know, he's not by himself. Uh, but would you just kind of give us just in a, in a minute before we go and, and, and pray with you? What's happening tonight? What's your focus? You want to come tonight? It's going to be a great evening. I am super excited. I love coming and hanging out with the Victory Chicks. It is like my favorite event that I get to be a part of when I come back into the country. Uh, tonight I'm going to be talking about expanding your circle. And it really goes along great with the message that Pastor Andy shared this morning. But just who can I expand? I'll expand my circle to invite someone else to come in and to journey with me and to walk with me. And so I'm uh, going to challenge you a little bit tonight, but we're going to laugh a lot. I'm going to tell you some crazy stories. Uh, and we're just going to have fun and drink tea with Beth. So maybe I'll convert her to tea drinking. That would be a miracle. Okay. But that's what we're going to do tonight. So Very cool. All right. Would you guys stand with us? Let's go ahead. Beth, would you come? I want to pray with Brian and Carolyn. God, today I thank you for this incredible couple and as a church, honored to have them spend a Sunday with us as they're in the States for a bit. I pray, God, that every need that they have from marital, emotional, financial, as a family and spiritual, that you would just, you'd meet. Lord, provide them with sign after sign that you are taking care of, of every detail as launch Sunday approaches. Lord, it's exciting to see Stockholm Community Church be planted and rooted and begin to see miracles happen as people accept Jesus as their Savior. So Lord, we speak a blessing over the Duns. May you continue to remind them, God, through big examples as well as very minute things that you're in this. And God, as she prepares to speak tonight, I'm excited to allow her to invest in the women of our church and pray, God, that you would just do an incredible thing as they're here. God, give us a great day today and help us again as we said this morning to say yes to the right things that lead to success and help us to avoid those areas that could cause a mess because we say yes to them. Bless our day in Jesus' name I pray. And we all say, let's celebrate and thank Brian and Cameron for coming today. Have a great day. God bless you.